Good morning! Halika! Magkapi tayo! Welcome to the Morning Coffee with Father Jerry. Our text for today is from Matthew chapter 20 verses 17 up to 28. It says, Now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way, he took the twelve aside and said to them, If we we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons. And kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want? He asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can. The answer, Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant, and with the two brothers, Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be the first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Thus far is the reading for today's reflection. Jesus should have been disappointed with the bunch of people who gathered around him and called him Master. While he was talking about his impending death, or passion, death, and suffering on the cross, they are so preoccupied with the idea of power and authority. Everybody was jockeying for position without regard to his apprehensions about the future to come. Brushing aside his own concerns, Jesus had to educate them once again into the true meaning of greatness. Instead of focusing on his upcoming trials, he had to teach his disciples up to the very end. This is dedication beyond the call of duty. True leaders sacrifice their own preoccupation to address the concerns of his followers. That is why Jesus is rewarded with disciples who followed him until the end. What is it for us? What is God's message for us today? Today's gospel reading is a bit serious. Jesus and his disciples are going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus wants to prepare them for what lies ahead for him, as well as for them. He warns his disciples that he will be handed over to the scribes and the chief priests. Not only that, but Jesus also tells them that he will be condemned to death. 
that he will be mocked, scourged, and be crucified. Can you imagine the disciples' response to Jesus' words? Were they frightened for Jesus and perhaps also frightened for themselves? Then Jesus tells them that he will be raised up on the third day. What are the disciples' reaction to that statement of Jesus? Then the focus of the gospel shifts as the mother of the sons of Zebedee comes up to Jesus. She has a favor to share or a favor to he she desires. And Jesus asks her what she wants. The woman is bold, but in her behavior and in her honest requests. The woman told Jesus that she wants her sons to sit with Jesus in his kingdom, one on his right and one on his left. What a request. The other disciples also were with Jesus during the encounter. How do you think the other disciples reacted to this mother's request? After all, what made her sons so special? What about them? Several of them had been with Jesus longer than her sons had. Notice, initially Jesus does not directly answer her question, but rather he speaks of the difficult past that was before him. Then he tells the woman that it is not his place to name the people who would be on his right and on his left in his kingdom. It will be his father in heaven who will make that decision. When the other disciples heard of this request, they were angry and indignant at the way Zebedee's wife had asked her for on behalf of her two sons. Jesus used this occasion to teach his disciples. He calls all of them together and told them not to lord their call and authority over everyone. Rather, their primary focus should be on serving each other and the people they would be ministering to. Jesus wanted them to have the right motivation for their ministry. It was not to be about power and authority to govern. Their ministry was to preach His word and to serve the people of God in His kingdom. Ito yung challenge sa ating lahat ngayon. It has something to do with our motivation. Why are we here in our church? Why we commit ourselves into preaching and sharing and proclaiming the good news? Why are we committing ourselves in the servant leadership of the church? And that's the ministry. Take note. Motivations can be tricky. We can fool ourselves into believing that we are doing something good for others. When the reality is we might just be expecting to receive a payoff. Sorry for that. It might be simply a word of thanks or receiving a favor in return because of our work. Or we are simply or we simply might feel righteous and good and feel good about how well we serve others forgetting the reality that we need to embrace the reality of the cross. Hopefully, our mission work flows simply from our desire to care for and help and serve others. True service is not about power and authority or money or popularity. If our service to help one another flows from our love and our desire to help each other, God also smiles at us. Today, what will we choose in our motivation to serve the church and to follow Jesus? 
let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the fulfillment of all our hopes and desires. Your Spirit brings grace, truth, freedom, and abundant life. Set my heart on fire with your love and truth in order for us to properly serve you in the ministry and with one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so paano to mga kapatid? See you tomorrow ulit. Don't forget to finish your copy. Magandang buhay. See you tomorrow.